Now this panel that has no moving parts, it's not like the electric alternator in your automobile or the big generators at TVA coal plants and nuclear plants, no moving parts. Now we're going to talk about the economics, okay, of, uh, of central power, that is the big power stations. I have a uh, uh, yeah, hold on just a sec. We're going to talk about the difference between photovoltaics, which is a part of the family of energy sources we call renewable and non-polluting versus the non-renewable and polluting forms like the fossil fuel. Mr. Watson showed you that piece of coal that is probably millions and millions of years old. Well, we're digging the coal out of the earth to create electric energy. Anytime you burn a hydrocarbon fuel, it's unavoidable. It's just in the chemistry and physics of the thing, you're going to produce carbon dioxide. Now, if you put a lot of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, well, for one thing, it's invisible, it's odorless, it doesn't cause grit to get in your eyes and hurt your eyes like fly ash from a, from a coal plant, but it also tends to poison the environment by increasing the global average temperatures. You've heard of global warming? It's the carbon dioxide that is mainly to blame for that. There's another uh, very powerful greenhouse gas, we call it, and that's called methane. And it's probably 30 times more powerful as a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. Okay, with all that said, we have this photovoltaic panel. And let's see what happens if we plug it up um, into... Okay, this, this side of the way. Yeah, and we're going to plug it up right now. This is an old-fashioned, what we call an analog voltmeter. Okay, now it shows you when this needle moves, what you cannot see with your own eyes, or feel with your hands, or hear with your ears, it shows the presence of an electric current, okay? So right now you don't see this doing anything, but I'm going to set this up here where you can see it. Can everybody see it? Yeah. Okay. Now this meter is designed to read up to 15 volts, and anything that goes over 15 volts, it'll just peg out on the right. So we know we've got at least 15 volts and then more to spare. So I'm going to ask you to step back so the solar panel can see the sun. Okay. It doesn't have to be, it's sensitive enough that it doesn't have to be direct rays. Now, are you keeping your eye on the meter? Okay, keep your eye on the meter. Okay, we're going to plug it up. Whoa. What happened? A lot of volts going on. Yeah, it's at least 15. I happen to know this panel is designed for somewhere between 21 and 22 volts output. So you can see that that energy uh, from the sun, I'm not putting anything else into it, I'm not burning any coal, I'm not burning any natural gas, I'm not burning any wood. It's just quiet, <coughs> silent, non-polluting, converting the sun's energy into electricity. Now, who, who's got the jacket? Me. Okay. Let's boil our jackets real quick. Now, what's going to happen if we cover up the panel? Okay, we got another. We need another jacket. We got a big hole down there. Okay, let's see, let's see you do it. Okay. Well, we got to cover it all now. Okay, push it on down. There you go. Okay, let's see you do it. Okay, let's cover it all now. Okay, push it on down. There you go. Okay, this is a team project here. Here's the black jacket. Well, there's two black jackets. Okay. The volts go down slowly. Did you see? Did you see it going down? Yeah. Cover up this hole. Okay. What happened to it? It's going down. It's blocking the sunlight. Yeah. It's blocking the sunlight. We're at about uh, 10 volts right now. We started with probably 21 or 22. Uh, so we're down to uh, we're down 10. to less than 12. Now, what happens if you're running a photovoltaic power plant and it's a cloudy day? Well, then all of a sudden there's going to be no energy produced? There's going to be no energy produced, exactly. Well, what, what about at night when the sun goes down? So then what do we do? They, they use the energy they, they... I'm sorry? They use the energy they used in the day? If they exactly. Can. And what, the way we do that, we store it. Now, this is a lithium-ion battery pack, okay? Now this would be much too small, too wimpy to go in a big power plant, but they do make 
uh, photovoltaic packs that are uh, bigger than all of us put together. They're as big as your classroom, okay? And they can be used to store the energy on a good day when there's lots of sunshine uh, and we can produce that energy. We don't have to use it right then. We can store it and release it at night and on cloudy days, okay? All right. So we're going to... We're gonna, uh, Let's see here. Okay, we're going to unplug the voltmeter. Okay, you can you can take you can, you can recover your jackets. Okay. Oh. Now I don't know why you have jackets on a day when it's going to be 95 degrees, but uh, anyway, it's cold, in the it's cold in the classroom. Okay. Now, right now, what I just did, I plugged the output uh, that will go through this thing. It's a controller. It charges the, it controls the voltage that goes into the battery pack. Uh, like I say, the, the PV has uh, an output of about 21 volts. We got to wrestle that down to about 12 volts to go into the battery pack. So, we just plug it in. Very simple. Now, this will show you, you may have a hard time seeing it, but it will show you the voltage that has been conditioned down to 12.7 volts. We turn it on and the battery pack starts charging. Wait, are those lighting up? Yeah, they'll light up as it charges. It's hard to see because of the sunlight. Okay, now here, here's the thing. Okay, let's say you, you're Matthew. Yeah. Okay, Matthew, uh, you are going to be the owner, the proud owner of an old 1950s model coal burning power plant, okay? All right, Nicole. you're buying coal, okay. Now, what's your name? Nicole. Nicole, okay. You're going to be the owner uh, side by side with a photovoltaic plant, a fairly new one, okay? All right, so here's the difference. Now, I'm the customer, and I'm going to buy wholesale energy from you. That's what the Tennessee Valley Authority does. It produces wholesale energy. Okay, here's the thing. The market will determine how much a unit of energy is worth. Let's say the unit, and we'll define that later, the unit of energy wholesale price is $100. Okay. Uh, Nicole, your energy, I pay $100 for it. Okay. Matthew, your energy looks just exactly like Nicole's energy, and I pay you $100. Okay, is that a fair deal? Now, uh, Matthew, here's, here's a little problem. You got to keep all that $100 I pay you. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're if you're a corporate entity, you know, you'll pay taxes. Uh, but also, don't you have to pay for the coal that you're burning? Oh, yeah. They don't give that to you, right? Yeah. You got to pay for that. Now, I don't know what the fraction of a, of a wholesale unit uh, is accounted for I by fuel. I don't have to pay for anything. Pardon? I don't have to pay for anything. Hey, Nicole's <laughs> got it. Okay, let's say, Matthew, it's 40%. you got to pay $40 out of that 100 for the coal you burn, okay? Uh -huh. And then you got to pay another 10 or $15 for every ton of coal you, you burn for the environmental cleanup. That costs money, okay? So let's What's say... But, well, that's, that's getting the fly ash out. That's getting the nitrogen oxide, sulfur dioxide... Uh, you're not right now doing anything to control the carbon dioxide, but just just to keep the worst visible pollutants from coming up, you're going to be you're going to be paying let's say a minimum of another ten dollars per unit. So fifty dollars of that hundred dollars I just gave you, you've got to give to somebody else. You get coal. Yeah, you got the coal now, Nicole. Now the hundred dollars I give you, how much do you got to keep? A hundred. You got to keep a hundred, and why is that? Because it comes from the sun. And the sun is free, right? Yeah. Well, which one is a better investment? If I'm thinking about investing money, Nicole's getting her inputs for free, and poor old Matthew over here, good grief, he's having to give half of it to the coal company. So I think you've got the better deal, right? <laughs> okay. What does she have to buy new equipment? Well, yeah, now you've got to consider the capital cost, which is the startup cost, buying this equipment. That's yeah, that's well, you got to buy other equipment, switch gear, transmission. Like, there's a lot of things you have to buy besides the, besides the PVs. But that's, that's the 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Most of my money. Yeah, the cost of the TVs has gone down. I I got more than half my money. You got you got to keep it all. It, well, you'll have a little bit of maintenance cost. If you're investor owned, you'll have some taxes. You'll have labor costs, just like Matthew does. But the great thing about your system is, the sure. maintenance cost is comparatively very low. He's got to pay some high-priced mechanics and technicians to maintain that old 50-year-old uh, coal-fired generating plant. Okay. What about the old nuclear plants? Okay, nuclear plants are non-polluting. They, they don't put uh, emissions into the air, that's for sure. But they have a lot of back-end costs, and that's disposing safely of the nuclear waste. And they have a lot of front-end costs because the cost of building a nuclear plant is so much and so uncontrollable that we're just not building any new ones now. And we haven't built any coal-fired plants, and I guess, Mr. Watson, been a long time. 50 years? I'd say so. And the Tennessee Valley Authority is actually taking old coal plants offline. They're decommissioning and they're retiring uh, because they're no longer competitive. See, they can't compete with Nicole's free energy source. Okay, now we talked about storing the energy. Okay, what do we do on a cloudy day? And what do we do at night? Okay. okay. Well, well, yeah, big, bit, much bigger batteries than this. So while I've been talking to you, the battery pack has been silently collecting energy. It's storing energy, okay? So, it, it, to, to be of any value, it has to be usable energy. So we're going to put this on the electric transmission lines, and you can see, well, that's a low voltage line right up there. But when you're, when you're going home on the bus or in a car this evening, look for the big power lines along the side of the highway. Those are transmission lines. And that's what brings the electric energy from the power plants and the switch yards into your home, okay? How much would it be for a whole entire 50 acres of just these? That's an excellent question, Matthew. Um, the cost of photovoltaics is going down rapidly. There's a lot of competition. The Chinese are big producers. We have a plant here in Tennessee that produces the silicon, crystal silicon, that goes into these plants, these uh, panels, okay? And that's very, very helpful. The other thing about going with uh, renewable energy sources like photovoltaics is that it creates jobs. It creates new jobs. And, uh, and it's, it's in the clean energy economy, yes. Uh, on a cloudy day, can you take like a crystal or something that reflects and take like a flashlight and point it at the, the, um, the photovoltaic? Um, um, okay, the, okay, the question is, on a cloudy day, could I take a high-powered flashlight and point it at the PV and generate electricity? The answer is yes. It doesn't care what form uh, or the source of that light. It has to be within a certain range of wavelengths to work with this panel. But light from any source will do it, including that high-powered flashlight. Now, okay, we've been storing electricity in the battery. But to make all this worthwhile, we have to do something useful with it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if you just left it on yeah. and took it out. Well, it, it just keeps charging until it reaches the maximum uh, of the battery. No, if you took it out while it's still on. Oh, if you took it out while it's still on, well, it, it'll, it'll just disconnect. Um, but I do need to disconnect. Excuse me here. I do need to disconnect the TV, the TV. which is right here. Okay. Okay, now you see... This wire is what brought the energy from the uh, solar panel up to the battery. So I'm going to disconnect it. So that's kind of like going into night for a cloudy day. We no longer are getting energy out of the uh, PV. So... We got a flashlight right there. Yeah, well this is a... Uh, let's see if I can find the other end of this cord. Okay. Okay, this is a this is a high efficiency LED lamp. Okay, uh, it's much more efficient than the old fashioned uh, tungsten filament lamps. This little thing right here is called an inverter. Okay, it's an electronic device that takes the 12 volts DC out of these lithium ion batteries and converts them into a usable 120 volts AC. Okay, all right. Now, what we're going to do? We're going to take our output, and let me see if I've got all the connections here. 
Am I missing something? Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Okay, sweetheart, step back just a little bit here because I don't want to get you in the line of fire. Okay, I'm gonna plug this into the output. I've got the switch turned off for safety. Okay. Now, okay, the switch is off. Okay, now I'm gonna plug the inverter into this receptacle. Okay, and then I'm going to put on the power. Oh, oh. So, now where where is that energy coming from? The lithium battery. Exactly. It originally started with the PV, which originally started with the sun, 92 million miles away. Okay. Wait, could you could you plug it up to the um to this and make it work from just the stuff? Make make it work live. Yes, we could. We could. Uh, I'm not sure I brought the cables to do that, but yeah, you could power it in real time. You sure can. But right now we're taking the stored energy out of the battery pack and putting it into the light bulb. What if you put uh, that cord that's connected to that and the input and the energy that was in the light bulb, would it transfer back into the battery? No. Uh, once, once this energy is released from the light bulb, it's released forever. We can't recover. Like radiant energy? Yeah, uh, but that's one of the great things about the LEDs. They don't waste a lot of their energy input by turning it into heat. They turn it all into light. Now, there's a, li there's a little heat loss there, just a little bit, but not much. Now, what would you say uh, if you were um, in rural development in remote parts of Africa where there is no electricity grid, like these lines out here, and you're many, many miles away from an electric power plant? They, they, can use, they can use these solar sun They can use these solar sun panels that can like boil tea and stuff. Yes, they use those. Yeah, they have direct conversion uh, solar systems, but they can also use PVs. You see, this one can pick up, it's portable. So even very poor villages can afford to buy these. Of course, you have to buy the controller. And then at night, this, is, this has been a problem for a long time, is in getting the uh, the children of very poor subsistence farmer villagers educated. And they have, they have homework, just like you do, to study at night, but they don't have lights. So they, they, conventionally they've done it with kerosene lamps, which are pollution sources. And they're very inefficient, and the cost of kerosene can be very high. Well, what if instead of doing that, they put up some PVs, store the power, store the energy in this power pack, and at night, they light up LEDs. And they would save a lot of they'd, they'd save all the way around, and then the kids could do their homework, right? Better, because those lights light up brighter. Yeah, 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 I mean, you'd probably need more, more lamps than that. Any questions? Um, yes. Is there a possible way to, you could, like, do, you could charge that and that at the same time? You could, you could. Now, I, I will tell you, this one has a limited output because it's not all that big. And I, I'm not sure how well it would work, but you, yeah, theoretically, you could, you could do both at the same time. Could you, uh, could you charge this up a day and uh, connect it to, like, uh, um, connect it to, like, multiple lamps at night, like LED? Oh, yeah, 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 you, you can connect multiple lamps. Now, the battery, this battery pack is not all that big, as you can see, so it has limited storage capacity. Okay. What happens if you charge charge it up all day? Would it just continue? Would it just stay at its max? Yeah, it would go to the max and top out and wouldn't wouldn't accept any more charge. That's what this device does. This, this controls it. This keeps it from overcharging and um, causing damage to, to your batteries. So if I touch that light bulb, it would hurt me. Now, if you touch a conventional old-fashioned lamp, yeah, it'll burn you. But you see, the great thing about the LED is it's using almost all of its energy to turn into light. The old-fashioned bulbs use most of that energy to turn into heat, which in turn produces the light. Mm -hmm. Not a very efficient way to do it, is, no, is it, Mr. Watson? No, what's, a, what's the possibilities of covering the whole middle school with these things? Well, I actually uh, visited an elementary school uh, near Bowling Green, Kentucky. This oh, was yeah. about 10 years ago. 
and they had covered every square inch that they could of the building. This was a model school. It was designed to show uh, ultra high energy efficiency. Uh, so they were getting a lot of their energy from the photovoltaics. Uh, the, 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 the teachers, and this was a good thing, uh, had covered parking. So they could park in the shade, park out of the rain. But the reason they did that is because they put PVs on top of these sloping uh, car canopies. So they were taking that energy. They were also doing geothermal energy, big time. Uh, and the, the school is operating and was operating off the grid. They did not need the power from the power company. That's very expensive to run a school. Uh, that's a big part of, uh, big part of the expenses. So, uh, so they uh, they were getting their energy for free. Could, could you and power about about a whole entire house with just one of these? But not one of these. You'd have to have a lot of them. Uh, you could cover the roof, um, and uh, usually what you have for home TVs, you have what's called a hybrid system. Uh, you you're still connected to the power grid, but on good sunny days, you can charge up the batteries. And save that energy. Could you put like, like um, a PV, a solar panel on top of like a car and like charge it? I've seen people do that. And um, like a hybrid you, car? You, yeah, like a van, uh, a modified van or an RV. Uh, yes, I've seen people do that. Yeah. Um, could you um, <coughs> could you power a whole pack of computer with this? Let's see what we're doing here. Could we, could we use a whole pack? we charge a whole pack of computer? You, that? you can. You can. Oh. Um, Let's see what kind of hookups we have here. Maybe we can look it up. Let's see if we can take an output. Let, let's see. Uh, that's not the kind of output I need. Well, anyway, uh, if you have one of these little car chargers, uh, it would plug in here. And I just forgot to bring the cable that makes that work. But you can recharge your cell phone or your iPhone or your iPad. Like you do with your phone over there. Pardon? Okay, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Mr. Harvey from WCS TV brought his uh, handy dandy uh, solar, solar rechargeable power pack, and he uses that to recharge his iPhone and, and other electronic devices. It has a solar panel. Sorry? Yeah, your dad has one. Yeah. They're, they're available from Amazon, but that's taking free energy from the sun. Okay. Now remember what we talked about inside, about how that lump of coal was formed? It started with the plant and animal matter that, that died and decayed millions and millions of years ago. But the original source of energy was, was the sun, that's right. So instead of burning that hydrocarbon fuel that originally came to us through the sun's energy, we just collect the sun's energy here today, October 1st, 2019, and uh, we got instant energy. And it's not costing us anything, right? Okay. Well, all right. Do we have any questions? Any questions? Um, can I put this piece of paper over it and block a little bit of the um, light so it stop it? Uh, it won't stop it because that paper, if you had something that, that would cover up the whole... Okay. Yeah, you're... Okay, now, you guys plugged up the voltmeter, okay. But right now, you see, um, you see, let, let's, let's, let's turn this off. Yeah, turn that off. Yeah, let's just leave that off for a minute. Okay, now let's get a lot of you to stand in front of the TV over here. I doubt that you can block enough light to drop the voltage. There's a lot of incident light coming in from the sides. Yeah, but you remember what we did a while ago when we took your, took your jackets? When we covered it up, the voltage went back. That's just like having clouds going over. Cover it, cover it. Yeah, if you, if you have... It's you, all right there. It's still coming in. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell from the meter that we've got some light leakage here. You all are not stopping the light. I'm going to light on. Well, I, I wish you wouldn't you do that. you break it. Yeah. Anyway. But anyway, what I'm telling you is if you cover it up completely, yeah, you're starting to reduce the voltage. You reduce the voltage a little bit. Yeah, don't don't don't, don't do that because I don't want those cables to come. Oh, did you turn it on? Yeah, that's okay. Let, let kind of let me operate the controls here, okay? Okay. 
Yeah. All right. One one last chance for questions. Oh. How much? How much light does it have to be? At, how much? How long does it have to go to make it really, really hot or touch it? It's like touching it. One of those long time like light bulbs. Yeah. Now that now the, the PV doesn't get hot. Oh, it doesn't. No. How can I get hot? Uh, well, you could apply a heat source, but that wouldn't help. It, but that would damage the uh, would, that would damage what, the materials. It, does, um, is it because it takes all its energy and produces it into yeah, the battery right. instead yeah. of taking some of it and leaving it there? Yeah, yeah. We're not we're not going to that step where we're producing heat to make energy. We're avoiding that step, and that step is very costly. So, um, okay. Now remember what we talked about. Yeah. Don't don't lean on. Um, okay, one last chance for questions. Why are the bugs on? Because the bugs, they go he's everywhere. The, he's in the radiant energy, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's liking the radiant energy. Okay, well, listen, thank you all. All right, thank you, sir. I'll, just, I'll see you back inside. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Steve.